What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Nice weekend for Arkansas, if you like winning, if you like winning. Some of you guys may have forgotten what that's like, but Arkansas swept Gonzaga in baseball, got a nice win over Missouri, 78-68. We're going to talk about that, get into some other things. Keith Grayson and Pete Roulier both going to join us, your questions and more. It's all happening on Hog Sports Live. Before we get started, as always, I want to remind everybody there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always watch live on Facebook Live, hence the name Hog Sports Live. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't done so already and interact with the video. Throw us a thumbs up if you like the content. Also available on YouTube, immediately uploaded afterwards. Be sure to follow that page. Subscribe to that page. Hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos. On Apple Podcasts, please throw us a five-star review if you like the content. We want people to find hogsports.com when they're searching Arkansas Razorbacks, and that definitely helps boost our channel. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Hogsports.com is just $1 right now for your first month, so go sign up. We are just a few weeks away from the start of spring drills. Uh, The recruiting dead period lifting here in five days, so a lot about to go on. So go sign up at hawgsports.com for just $1 your first month. It breaks down to like three cents a day, something like that. Pretty cheap. Pretty cheap to find out what you've been missing or 30% off your first year if you choose to go that route with a seven-day free trial. All right, so jumping right into it. Again, we'll get to your questions here in a little bit, but Arkansas – with a 78-68 win over Missouri. Didn't start off that good. (laughs) I mean, it was a little scary to start off. And then they started getting to a rhythm and then a nice surge there to end the half and did not trail the entire second half. Never tied even in the entire second half. There was a period, you know, when they got back and forth, about two to five points, and then Arkansas outplayed them in the last minute, 17 or so, and, and ended up winning by 10. Good to see Isaiah Joe back out there getting the start way faster than I think any of us anticipated. Usually you hear knee surgery and you're saying, okay, six weeks. But he got out there quicker, and I didn't didn't think he looked slowed or anything like that. He was, you know, he would take it inside, wasn't shying away from contact, and that stroke was there. That, I mean, really, let's be fair, Isaiah Joe's shooting 34% from three-point range. That's just, that's barely better. That's barely worth it if you consider shooting, you know, 50% from inside the arc. You need to be shooting like 33.3%. So it's like better better than – I mean, barely <laughs> barely worth it. But uh, he was 5 of 10 Saturday, which was nice to see. So he was he was knocking them down. Had a couple of long-range ones. Also, Desi Sills with a nice game, 4 of 6. I think that was the best game that Desi's played all year. Played 32 minutes, coming off the bench. Said he had a chip on his shoulder coming into the game. 17 points, 4 of 6 from downtown, 6 of 8 on field goals, 3 rebounds. Had an assist also. So I thought it was a really strong game by Desi Sills. And this was a game also, you know, where Mason Jones only had 12 points, didn't shoot particularly well, only 2 of 9 from the floor. But it's amazing how getting Joe back opens things up. You know, you still have a lot of people focused on Mason Jones. But, you know, you have Joe knocking down the three. Suddenly Jimmy Witt Jr. is finding an opening for his mid-range game. That's what it. That's what happens when you can spread the floor out like that, and you got another. I mean, they haven't had a guy that's like this guy can hurt you at any time. He could go, you know, have a flurry. Aside from Mason, so having another guy has really opened up things. Uh, I think for other players, you go from right now with Arkansas basketball, you go from being like you know the first four out or the next four out even um, to a lot of people having them back in the tournament. Jerry Palm, I believe, on CBS Bracketology has him in. Joe Lenardi does not have them in on ESPN. I've got a long breakdown on everything going on with bracket predictions. So right now, and this was on Sunday, so some stuff has changed on Monday even. I mean, I think they've gone up to 45 in the net, and I think they were 47th on Sunday, 48th on the net, and Ken Palm had them 47. I think they're like 45 and 47 on those uh, today, so a little bit of a change. They have – so Bracket Matrix, if you don't ever check out Bracket Matrix, Bracket Matrix, if you don't ever check out Bracket Matrix, they take like 100 brackets from across the country. Some of them reputable, some of them not. Um, But five of them have Arkansas in the tournament. T3 Bracketology, 
bracketresearch.com, realtimerpi.com, and number fire and KPI all have Arkansas in the tournament. So just five. And on bracket matrix, they're listed as the first four out. Last check anyway. Again, that could have changed. It, it changed a little bit on Kim Palm and, and on the net. So that could have changed a little bit. So Arkansas right now is tied for 10th with Missouri, who they just beat. So they split the series with Missouri. So 10th out of 14 teams. That's 10 seed is very important because you get the first round by in the SEC tournament. Okay. So you don't want to be starting on March 11th. You want to be starting at least on March 12th. And then the double by goes to the first four team. They start on March 13th. So Arkansas is five and nine in SEC play, two games behind Tennessee, who they play Wednesday in Fayetteville, a return game. That was Arkansas's worst game of the year. Was that February 8th, I think. So they get a return game with Tennessee, and they also are tied with Alabama. Alabama and Tennessee are tied for ninth and – is that right? Ninth and tenth. That's not right. Um, I think I wrote that down wrong because Arkansas is tied for tenth, I believe. So, But Arkansas and Alabama – or excuse me, Tennessee and Alabama are both 7-7 seven and seven in SEC play. Arkansas would hold the tiebreaker Alabama. They don't play Alabama again. They beat them in Tuscaloosa earlier in the year. So 7.30 – Bud Walton Arena, SEC Network, against Tennessee on Wednesday. They lost 82-61 last time. Mason Jones, I think, only had nine points, which is what was happening. I mean, if Mason Jones didn't go for 40 when they had Joe out, then they weren't winning the game or you know, even being competitive. I mean, they've been competitive in about every game, though, I should say. So, so what's it going to take for Arkansas to get in the tournament? I would say that they're firmly on the bubble right now. Uh, some people have them in. Even, you know, some reputable sources have them in. I think you have to factor in the Isaiah Joe factor, you know, getting Joe back. Arkansas is one in six without Joe on the floor, one in five without Joe on the floor, 16 and five with him. So quite a difference. Quite a difference with Joe on the floor. So some reputable sources have him on there. If Arkansas won these last four games, that's going to put them at 19 – or excuse me, they won the last four. They've won 17, so that put them at 21 wins. That would include a win over LSU, who at 10-4 and four in the SEC, LSU is pretty much in the dance. I mean, they would have to completely collapse. So LSU is pretty much in the dance. So that would give you a marquee win. Right now, your only marquee win, I would say, you know, against a team that's being talked about in the tournament is Indiana on December 29th, winning at Bloomington. That's a tough place to win. So that's their marquee win. And if they beat LSU and they won all four of these games, which individually it's possible that they can do it. They get them in Bud Walton Arena. So if they could do that, I think that probably gets them in. May need to win one game in the SEC tournament. I mean, you don't want to go into the tournament and lose first round. That never looks good. But if they lost that one, if they, say they went three and one, finishing things out, puts them at twenty wins heading into the tournament, into the SEC tournament, win a couple of games, you got twenty two wins. You factor in not having Joe previously. I think that might be enough. It's going to be really close. But as we said last week. You need to be surging at the end. You don't need to be one of those teams that's just holding on. Right now, I don't think we I don't think anybody should feel good about Arkansas making the NCAA tournament right now. They are they could just as easily not even come close in the eyes of the committee. But it's gonna be close. But if they take care of business, I mean it's in their hands. If they take care of business then then they've got a real shot. Let's look at the remaining schedule for Arkansas. Let's see. Tennessee, as I mentioned, on Wednesday. Saturday, they go to Athens to take on Georgia. They can absolutely win this game. No question they can win this game. It's always tough to win on the road in the SEC, but they can win that one. And then the big one, March 4th against LSU on a Wednesday at 6 o'clock in Bud Walton Arena. They need a great crowd for this one. It's a Wednesday. It's a midweek game. They've been, I mean, the crowds have been great. Especially consider, you know, even the Missouri game, you know, it's a sellout, but obviously it's not full. But it was a great crowd still considering the circumstance. They lost five in a row. So, LSU, Wednesday, March 4th, circle that on your calendar. It's a big one. And then you wrap it up with a game at College Station. Again, they beat Texas A&M earlier in the year. 
they have a better team than Texas A&M does, who's you know still filling some things around. Individually, you look at each of those games, the LSU game's toughest, but Tennessee, Georgia, Texas A&M. I mean, you almost say that they should win these. They have a better team, I think, than all these guys right now. LSU is the, the wild card. Win that one, you might have taken care of business. I thought this was a cool story. SEC recruiting experiences dwarfs other Power 5 leagues. We've got a great national team at 24-7. They pick up all kinds of great stories, write all kinds of, you know, long, detailed stuff. So right now, the recruiting expenses in the SEC, average per school, is $1.53 million. ACC is second at $1.15 million. Arkansas, where do you think Arkansas is? fits you would be surprised Arkansas is fifth in the country in spending for recruiting Georgia's number one at 3.6 they're way ahead of everybody they're a million dollars ahead of Alabama which is number two at 2.6 Tennessee is next at 2.2 Clemson at 2.2 is after that, and then Arkansas at 1.9 million. That's the top five in the country. I'll tell you one reason I think that Arkansas is high because they have to travel farther. They don't have that 200-mile radius or so, you know, where they can draw talent. They've got to get into Texas. They've got to get into, you know, Louisiana, a lot of other places to get talent. So I think that's one reason that Arkansas' spending is so high. But I think it's encouraging to see. Penn State and Florida State are the only non-SEC programs outside the national superpower, Clemson, spending at least $1.5 million annually on finding talent. So it's all SEC schools, Clemson, Penn State, and Florida State. The only SEC schools not inside the top 20 nationally for recruiting spending are Auburn, South Carolina, Missouri, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State. Thought that was really interesting. All right, we've gone about 15 minutes. I told Pete Roulier that I would give him a holler at about 11.30, and we are at that mark right now. So where's Pete's deal? So for those of you who don't know Pete, Pete's been with us for a good year now, and he has been with us for a good year. Danny West is trying to blow me up. Something must be happening. Where are you at, Pete? And does a great job. Most of his content is free. Trey, what's going on, man? What's up, Pete? I was just running over some basketball stuff, and I think I said just about everything I could say, and I thought we'd dive into a little bit of baseball. You know what basketball is right now? They're like the Undertaker gif. What is that? <laughs> You know where he's sitting there in the coffin? The yeah. Undertaker, the WWE Oh, wrestler. yeah, 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 yeah. I know and who he, he is. Just, uh, comes up with the eyes. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's like right now. Yeah. Who does now that make? Who is Paul Bear, I wonder? You know who Paul Bear is? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, man. <laughs> Paul Bear was his manager. Creepy looking. Oh, okay. Creepy looking. Okay. Uh, I just you know, know about the gift stuff, guy. man. I'm a millennial. Yeah, I hear you. So, yeah, let's talk about baseball. So, Arkansas sweeping the series. 4-0, played four games against Gonzaga. You were at all of them. What would you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great four games. Another, so, Arkansas is up to a 7-0 start because they swept Eastern Illinois in the, series, the season opening series. So, yeah, there was a lot of big stories to come out of this weekend. I think the, the number one takeaway was that Robert Moore, 17-year-old freshman, decided to skip his senior year of high school, is a freaking man. Mm -hmm. um, he got it done. Uh Jesus, I remember geez. I wrote something on him after the third game of the series because it was just phenomenal. He had that um, backhanded glove flip to first base that looked like a professional. He had, I think, seven RBIs after that and finished the series with two RBIs, but three for three that day, two for two on Sunday. Um, and this was a guy that everyone expected to be an elite defender but not an elite hitter. Right. And he's proven that he can do – both at a very high level so you got that going um up and down the lineup everybody's hitting the ball casey barton um he's another guy that a lot of people want to talk about he's been struggling a lot this season he's looking lost to play a lot of 
bad swing and misses, a lot of strikeouts, but um, he finally got things going, hit a home run on Sunday. So if you can get Casey Martin going, your preseason All-American shortstop, then I think one through nine, the order is just on fire. And then what I was really surprised about so far has been the arms in the bullpen. It's been a complete rebuild, mm-hmm. um, considering you had guys like Jacob Kostyshock, uh, Matt Cronin, uh, Cody Scroggins all go pro. Um, you didn't really know what you had. Dave Van Horn said they were restocked and they have a bunch of good young arms, but you can't really know until you see it. We saw it this weekend. Uh, a bunch of young, really talented arms, a couple of lefties. Um, you got Caden Monk and, and Zach Morris, freshman out of Cabot. Um, the real, the one guy that's really struggled on the mound has been Blake Adams, a guy out of Springdale Harbor, um, freshman. A lot of people thought he was going to be the third starter. He struggled a little bit. Um, but at least he's throwing strikes, so that's something that you got a great pitching coach, and Matt Hobbs with the Yankees wanted this offseason. As long as he's throwing strikes, you can figure something out, and his confidence is going to be there. So all in all, you have to be really happy with where Arkansas is. A lot of polls have them as the number one team in the country, and I don't see why not. But uh, they got a big weekend coming up, and you're going to see what they're really made of. Pete Roulier joining us here on hogsports.com, Hogsports Live. And so you, you talked about the weekend coming up, Pete, and it's – Oklahoma on Friday at uh-huh. Minute Maid Park in Houston, and then Texas on Saturday at Minute Maid Park in Houston. Uh huh. That's, and a, then that's Baylor a couple on of, Sunday. Yeah, and then Baylor on Sunday. So that's a right. that's a that's some nice early test one after another. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's kind of like the Big Twelve SEC Challenge. It's more tournaments. There's a couple other SEC teams going over there. I know LSU is going to be playing some Big Twelve teams in that tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a huge challenge. Oklahoma is a team that they played in the expedition, the fall expedition earlier this season. Got some nice arms. Um, and that's really what's going to be the test for me. Uh, it's going to be seeing if this lineup is as potent as we think it is, just because, I mean, uh, Gonzaga had a couple guys that might end up going pro that on the mound. Um, Eastern Illinois had one cat that was, you know, a, a decent pitcher. But they're, they're going up against some guys that are – going to be um, first round picks in the MLB draft. These are going to be, these are going to, this is what's, when you're going to see what uh, this line is really going to make it. And especially guys like Robert Moore who have been excelling. This is a different kind of level. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a huge step up. Um, Christian Franklin's been raking against lesser competition. Let's see if he can, has figured out some of the things that were kind of, uh, you know, hard for him during his freshman season. Um, yeah, it's going to be a really good test. And then, of course, the pitching is going to be uh, guys that I mentioned like Caden Monk and Zach Morris. I think I know now that Connor Nolan and Patrick Wicklander, your two Friday and Saturday guys, are going to be able to get it done. Some veterans in the bullpen like Kevin Copps, they've proven that they can pitch well against good competition. It's going to be um, it's going to be interesting to see what these younger guys can do. So, Pete, anything else that um, we didn't touch on with baseball? I want to ask you a little bit about basketball also, but I also understand that I'm not a baseball fan. Yeah, I mean, genius, there's so much to so. take in. There's so much. See, here's the thing about baseball. They played seven games in two weekends. Mm-hmm. And, you know, used to football season and basketball season where you kind of have to wait to see what's going on. But I've taken a lot of baseball the last couple weekends, and there's just so many takeaways. Um, uh, Danny and I kind of have a rivalry. We both picked a player of the year in Christian Franklin and Jacob Nesbitt mm-hmm. to be breakout players, which – to be honest, there's not a lot of options when it comes to breakout players for Arkansas because a lot of these guys on the team are already proven, so you can't really say that Casey Opens is going to be a breakout player. You already know how good he's going to be. But what's the qualification? Always... What's the qualification for breakout player? Is it just on who you guys decide, or is there something else? Well, it's on who we decided, but you, like I said, you can't say that um, Scooter Harris is going to be a breakout player his senior year when you already know what he's made up. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I like in basketball, I, I picked Reggie Cheney. We'll see how that goes, but. Uh, not going great. I, somebody, not going great. I know. I'm just saying, like somebody that hasn't that that you could, could see really coming into the realm. You're right. So, Danny went with Jacob Nesbitt, and I went with Christian. I'm just Franklin. saying. I'm just saying. Obviously, I know what breakout player means, <laughs> Pete. But okay. what, I, what I'm saying but is, you asked me. What? No. What I'm saying is, who decides who wins breakout player? How is that going to be decided? Oh, when you can look at the numbers, subjective. The, the eye test. I know Danny is watching every game just like I am, and I think he knows who's winning right now. This okay. Christian Franklin's been absolutely phenomenal. He had two home runs um, so far, but his guy Jacob Nesbitt's been insane in the field. And then mm. I haven't even mentioned defensively what Arkansas looks like. Um, mm. Robert Moore, like I said, is an elite defender in the infield. Christian Franklin in center looks like he can do everything that was expected to do. He's fast. 
um, faster than Dominic Fletcher, who was a great center fielder, um, was. And then Jacob Nesbitt, who was Danny's breakout guy at third base, has been really impressive to watch. He is a true professional, uh, making all the tough plays look easy, especially when Arkansas needs it in big situations. So that's going to be big down the stretch. I think this team, like I said, like I mentioned, number one in a lot of polls right now. Um, so it's it's Omaha or bust, mm-hmm. absolutely. Your description of breakout player to me, Pete, reminds me of this time I went to the doctor. It was a new place, and I got on the scales, and they, they weighed me, and I saw this number I didn't recognize, and I said, whoa, number's off. And he goes, oh, it's kilograms. And I said, oh, okay, what is it? And he goes, it's just a different unit of measurement. <laughs> okay. You asked me. You legit asked me. I was like, are you serious? Player. Do what? You asked me, you said, what is a breakout player? And I gave you exactly what a breakout yeah, player I, was. Yeah, I, I phrased the question poorly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's not on me. And so great. if anybody didn't know what a breakout player is, now, now you know. Now, now you have the, the textbook definition. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> speaking of breakout, Arkansas broke out again in basketball, got Isaiah mm-hmm. Joe back. Nice game against Missouri. Started off a little slow, but it, maybe they got their bearings a little bit with having Isaiah Joe back. I'm sure you had a oh, chance yeah. to watch the game. I know baseball was starting right probably about when it was ending, but what, what did you think of uh, of the basketball team? And, and what do you think about their, their chances here moving forward? They're, they're firmly on the bubble, as I've been saying. They got Tennessee, Georgia, LSU, then A&M. And I That's think right. everyone's hoping that they can win out. I don't know about that LSU game, but they got a pretty good shot with Isaiah Joe because they look completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, the big thing that stuck out stuck out to me was just the spacing that Isaiah Joe brought. It has been a struggle for guys like Jimmy Witt and then Mason Jones being double teamed all the time. Mm-hmm. It looked like they were just stuck offensively. Then you bring Joe in there, and you have to respect what he can do from range. Mm-hmm. It completely changes them offensively. What do you think? So I missed the Tennessee game uh, because oh, I, was, wow. I, was yeah. in, I was in New York. So, but Zachary Smith says, what's the key to beating Tennessee? What do you think it is based on how the game went last time? Obviously, Mason Jones got to score more than nine points probably. Yeah, Mason Jones got to score more than nine points. Here's the thing, Trey. The, the game they played against Tennessee was just an awful game, like all around for Arkansas. It yeah. was one of those games that they just looked defeated. Mm. They were run down, broken down. I think they were tired from um, – I think they just got off a road loss to Missouri. And then does, the, right after – the Tennessee game was right after they lost the lead against Auburn. Mm-hmm. And that really started that whole spiral out of control. And Tennessee's where it all kind of accumulated together. Just this one awful, poor showing. Um, I think the key to the game is you got Isaiah Joe back, honestly. Because offensively, they couldn't get anything going. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, that just led to turnovers, which is uncanny for Arkansas. They turned the ball over way too much against Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem at Bud Walton Arena. These two teams, I feel like, are pretty even. I think advantage Arkansas, though, when you're playing in Bud Walton Arena. There's definitely a revenge factor as well. All right, Pete. I appreciate you joining me. I've got my – excuse me, your arch nemesis, Keith Grayson, on next. And I told him oh. about 1140 I'd get him on. And Lord knows I don't want this guy mad at me. <laughs> man, I thought we were done with Keith. I saw he was at like a spring training game the other day. Uh, yeah. That's cool, man. Balling out, paying full price for a spring training ticket. You're really living it up, Keith. All right, man. All right. All right Tell him I said hi. Pete. I will do. All right, bye. All right, later. All right, that's uh, Pete Rouillet. Pete does a great job for us at hogsports.com. Most of Pete's stuff is free, so be sure to sign up for our newsletter. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter on 24-7 Sports, At hogsports.com, you just go to the middle of the page, literally enter your email address, hit sign up, and I think you have to do a confirmation email when uh, they'll send you something. But definitely sign up for that if you want free Razorback news in your inbox every morning. Where we at, Keith? What's up, Keith? How you doing? Been a while. Kiffin looks right now. I, it's oh, been, yeah. It was a long, it was a long weekend. He's like, had some rough pitches. looks, man. Oh yeah, no, he's definitely rocking the divorce dad look. <laughs> I, uh, where he's just, he's got like a soggy dollar T-shirt on and yeah. a head full of Kareem. No, yeah. I, uh, I, it was like Pete said, it was opening day of the Diamondbacks spring training. Mm-hmm. Um, paid twenty five dollars for the t- for a seventy dollar ticket. By the way, didn't pay full price. Mm-hmm. Um, seventh row, tenth yeah. row behind home plate. Anyway, um, no, just a good weekend. Ended it with a well, a bourbon 
tasting. Uh, that was the main course for dinner last night. So I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm moving slow. But why yeah. don't why don't you have Mike Anderson Jr. on the show? Why don't I have him on there? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't. I kind of. The more we do this, I kind of just like having my steady guests, my rotation of guests, and just talking. I, I mean, there's so so many other shows out there that do, you know have a lot of guests on and stuff and that's their thing. And, you know, I don't know, this has kind of been our thing and it, it, it seems to work for us. So that's, that's kind of why, why do you he think I should have, have a, he just, he just seems to have a lot to say about an Arkansas basketball team and glossing over the fact that, uh, St. John's is like two and 13 in yeah. their conference play. Well, I mean, what are you, what are you going to, what are you going to do? It's his dad, you know, his dad was fired from Arkansas, his dream job. I, I can't say I blame him for if he's salty or, or whatever, or pointing out Arkansas's deficiencies. You know, there's this weird, there's a weird amount of like, there's not that many trolls on Twitter, I guess, but, um, for the basketball stuff, like it, you know, that's why, hell, I probably wasn't on the show until we were, I think we were three and two in conference play. And that's when I would pose the question, what's going to get us to the tournament? Mm -hmm. Like what in your mind is the, and you're saying 10 wins probably minimum. And now, now you're saying we could be in it, um, like eight and 10, right? I mean, that, that's the way it could shape out if we go think three the, for four well I, I think the the committee is you need them to look at the isaiah joe factor that they're one in five without without isaiah joe and it happened you know pretty late you know what i mean that's got to play a role doesn't it keith one in five without him 16 and five yeah with they him. take that into account and, and then, then if we get if you, we get one in nashville that that's a right. that's a neutral site quad i almost feel like that's imperative i mean there's so many teams that you feel like going into the going in that you know, this is an NCAA tournament team for sure, and they drop one, look bad in the first round of the SEC tournament, and that kind of – it seems to sour the committee on them, you know. So I always feel like no matter what you – you know, if you're not just like a shoe-in type, then you need to win one in the SEC tournament. Yeah, for sure. And I, like I said the last time I was on the show – be kind of prepared to miss it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not that, and it's and the, the other thing is what, I'm, what I wanted to say with that is our fan base doesn't need to go like full out freak out mode. If we miss the tournament in mm-hmm. year one, because we got a lot, the, the team dynamic is going to change a lot next year with the amount of talent that we got coming in. And we get the love child of Stephen Hill and Steph Curry coming in to play the five. I mean, it, it's going to look <laughs> completely different stretch four, whatever he's going to play. So I'm I'm excited about what what we've seen this year with a with slim. I mean, there's been like one, two. I guess the Florida game kind of got out of hand at the end um, after they made that run. But there's been literally uh, outside of the Tennessee game, everything's been within seven points for the most part. On if we lose a game, you, you know, they can, know how, they can be pretty positionless next year. You know, like even Jalen Williams coming in, he can shoot the three. You know, he's got some right. range. And he can put the ball on the floor. So, I mean, as a 6'9", some people say he's 6'10 now. But, um, you know, and then, of course, Connor Vanover we know can shoot. So, I'm excited about next year. I mean, I'm, I'm still really enjoying – like, this has been one of the more fun years to me for basketball, probably since uh, Jalen Barford and and, um, and Daryl Macon, you know, when, when Arkansas had that – you know, they had a pretty solid team. They almost beat North Carolina in the NCAA tournament. That was a fun year to me. But this has definitely been the most fun year since then, and maybe maybe a little bit more fun just because there's so much newness you feel. And, you know, bringing in the number six recruiting class in the country next year, and that doesn't include Connor Vanover and J.D. Note and uh, Bay Bay and all those people that have, that have had to sit out this year. Have you even watched a baseball game? Or do you, you yeah. just like covering – you just like covering like bad to – marginal teams you don't like it when <laughs> arkansas does well in anything so you're like ah, yeah. track and baseball we're gonna forget about that. yeah you know i'm just i don't know i i care about the baseball team and you know i want to see them do well and i know that arkansas fans obviously love razorback baseball it's just it's just never been my thing you know i do things that i love that's why i'm in this business because i love basketball and baseball or basketball and football Love covering recruiting and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's why I'm in this business. Not because of baseball. And it's nothing against baseball, but that's why we had Pete Roulier on earlier. So are you sending one of those dudes to cover uh, if we make it to Omaha? Are you going to send either Danny or Pete up there to yeah, I'm not gonna be, drink for a week? Yeah, I sent, two weeks? I'll send Pete. Um, 
you know, it's not like uh, – Hey, thanks for covering the baseball team. I'm going to Omaha, though. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that to them. But um, I, I watch the baseball game. I mean, I don't watch all of them, but I watch a lot of them, and especially when it gets down to uh, you know, close to, to tournament time and and things like that, World Series and stuff like that. What does a guy like Pete make? You got you got to throw in a trip because that's pretty much like. You're paying him with like pennies and pocket lint. I told him he asked me for advice, and I gave him the same advice I gave him gave Danny when they're like uh-huh. deciding. But you don't, you probably don't know this. For some reason, both those dudes called me when they got offered the job. Yeah, and I told them both the same thing to go into insurance. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go into sports reporting. I don't, uh, I don't see yeah. the benefit of that. But yeah, send Pete to send Pete to. Uh, the College World Series if we get there. Because I know Danny doesn't leave Washington County. No. Danny's going with me to Nashville, idea. though. Danny will be getting on a plane for the first time. We got a, <laughs> we had a conference in a couple of weeks, and he's going to be on the a, plane for the first time in like 12 talk. years. That's a good walk and talk. Was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have Danny going through TSA. <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> I wonder if they'll let me do that. I have the TSA pre-check thing, so I think I get more liberties to – carry through with me so maybe i'll just keep my phone out and record him getting patted down so speaking of basketball what do you what do you think you think they're gonna make it sports i don't know where you're going with that last week but it's a cluster or something with all the with all the hog stuff happening right now Uh because not even i think uh caden salter just announced that he's going to be on campus march 2nd yeah best quarterback in texas yeah. Hey, we haven't talked about the War Memorial deal, which, you know, Arkansas submitted a waiver request to play the game in War Memorial. Did they really, though? Did they? Re- did they I mean, say, I saw did it. Did they want that to go through? It didn't. I'm, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but I'm, I'm, I don't know that they probably said much more than all shucks. Well, darn, yeah. we didn't get it. Um you know, they may. I saw the letter uh, written by John Fag. I'm sure he didn't like actually, you know, write the letter himself, but you know, probably had a couple people chiming in on it. But it was it was written by him technically. And what did it say? It said that they should consider War Memorial Stadium an extension of the campus. I think that was their main point, and that there's no advantage gained. You know, it seemed like for years Arkansas was complaining about being able to bring recruits to off-campus games, and, you know, that was never accepted until, like, Georgia and Florida decided they wanted to be able to do it for the cocktail party, and then it was accepted. You remember that? It's been a long time ago, but I don't – I don't I don't know. What do you think they're going to do with War Memorial now, just continue it on the way it, they, they planned it with every other year? I'm not worried about the red white game. I mean, it's going to be re- back, go back and revisit that strategy, or I'm sure they'll they may just allocate some more funds to them and say, hey, we know you're missing out on some revenue here. Uh, we get forty five million dollars a year from the mm-hmm. SEC network advertising. Uh, here's five hundred, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. They so will eventually stop playing games there. That's the this is the way it always goes. You keep paring it down. Every single year, it's a little less, less and less, you know, and then eventually it'll just be they won't play games there anymore. They could really do something with the amount of – I mean, they could – why Why are they not alternating weekends with, like, Arkansas State, UCA, UAPB? I mean, they can mm-hmm. do home games there just the same way, right? Yeah. Yeah, they can. I mean, their biggest thing right now is the Salt Bowl. That's their that's their biggest revenue generator. Yeah. So, Again, the biggest disadvantage of playing in War Memorial, I think there are a lot of advantages that are probably you can't just see on paper. You know, in terms of you know reaching out to people in Central Arkansas, and there's places not just Central Arkansas, but South Arkansas and East Arkansas. It's a little bit more of a trip to get to Fayetteville versus Little Rock, and. <laughs> So there's some advantages like that, but the the obvious disadvantage is recruiting, especially, you know, especially when you're talking every other year, because the way it was set up or the way it is set up is you play a home game in Arlington and a home game in Little Rock. And for those games, you know, you can give tickets to recruits, but you can't interact with them. You can't show them your campus or, you know, take them, take them through the Jerry and Gene Jones family student athlete success center. You can't, you know, you can't do all those things. So it's a, it's a major negative, I think, in recruiting. And it's difficult to find that 
point where you can get recruits on campus because, first of all, a lot of them are in Texas. They're playing late-night games. They might travel. They might have a long bus ride. If you're Arkansas and you kind of stink, then you're playing a lot of 11 o'clock games. So that means getting up at the crack of dawn and going to Fayetteville for, you know, not, and it's not just official visits, but it's also, you know, unofficial visits. So it's just – I think it's a just a huge – I think it's a competitive disadvantage, first of all, playing that many games away from your home stadium that are counted as home games. But I think it's a it's a big disadvantage in recruiting also. Just, you know, I, politicians and academic nerds are kind of the same to me. Where They don't know – they've never run a business. They don't know how to spend our money. So mm-hmm. why are they making decisions? Let Sam Pittman go in there and tell them how it's going to be and that's how it's going to be <laughs> what he needs from them to for to support a winning program yeah. instead of them like trying to just make everybody happy and spreading this too thin mm-hmm. you know so um hey i know you're about to cut me off but if anybody's everybody needs to go check out the houston alumni association for the razorbacks they have a bunch of events planned this weekend um if you're traveling to the baseball game mm-hmm. they're uh they know how to party on like the dallas that blue hair club that got me pissed. <laughs> that they got me kicked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's one of my favorite stories ever. Oh, Keith God, Gracie, getting... just people, I, just old people with money don't like me for some reason. So. so Keith, for those who don't know, we bring this up every once in a while. But Keith, back in two thousand and I guess it was two thousand twelve because it was in January. It was the two thousand eleven Cotton Bowl. Is that right? Yeah. So Keith founded the Arizona Razorback Club. Founded it. I also I founded I also founded the Las Vegas Alumni Association, okay. which is still going. Okay, um, but the the Arizona one is kaput. There's 700 people that graduated from the University of Arkansas that live in the Phoenix Metroplex, mm-hmm. and we don't have an alumni association right now. Right, but you started one up, and then you had a pretty wild weekend in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl that year. I remember. I think you. Broke out onto the field. You broke into the press area, and you documented all of it. Is that right? I had some fake business cards for a company that I never launched. That was it looked like it was a media relations thing, and mm-hmm. they were letting me in the press conference with Bobby Petrino after we walked off the field. Had the sledgehammer. Jericho and Nelson gave me the sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. We're in the tunnel walking off the field, um, and then everything was documented. I wrote this story, but you know it. What people don't understand is not everything on the internet is true, and so I write in this style where it's satirical. Some of it's some of it's funny, some of it's true. It's kind of a, you know a good joke has some sort of truth to it, but yeah. um, not everything was. But correct, you you you, know? you received a letter and notifying you that you would no longer be allowed to serve as president of the club that you founded. You got Steve like Steve Jobs, you got knocked out of your own company. The president of the university at the time, that, that's how involved it was. Got so They got so pissed off that they, yeah, they, they had me on a call. They said they were going to have a hearing about it. I offered to fly in and, t- and read the story out loud and say, you tell me what part of this is offensive. I mean, some of it was, I'm sure, because, you know, <laughs> I, I have some blue humor yeah. uh, when I'm not being edited by uh, 24-7. But I, I, um you know, that's what I think is funny. So uncomfortable things are funny. So, mm-hmm. so I, you know, obviously the president of Wilson Athletics gave me the tickets at the night before the game mm-hmm. that in the, the field pass or whatever that I had. In the same joke, I said he offered me $250,000 to sleep with me. That didn't happen. Like so people have to draw the line and know that that's a joke. But apparently they didn't want the – president of the alumni association having conversations like that mm-hmm. on, on a, on a message board, which is, and, and I'm anonymous on mm-hmm. there supposedly too, you know, it's on screen name. Yeah. So, so but now everybody knows cause I'm not trying to hide my name. But somebody, think, I, somebody turned you in. Oh what, yeah. No, it, it stinks about it. But also, um, I mean, now that that chapter does not exist, it's gone because of this. Yeah. And the $5,000, we raised every year to to give to the foundation just by square games, and we're going to have an rounds. upstanding president, or we're not going to have one at all. Is that it? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> maybe 
maybe I would think that Bill Clinton and Donald Trump changed the uh, ah, no politics the requirements <laughs> a little bit. I mean, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm probably more Trump than Clinton. All right, but, uh, no politics, <laughs> no religion, no politics. Just on the Twitter, just on the Twitter. <laughs> you can say funny things on the Twitter. Yeah. So that's kind of the story, I guess. But it was cool, you know. And I'm glad P- Petrino's back in Missouri State. I could be working there next year. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I like Bobby, man. Yeah. Speaking of Bobby's, what you did to Bob Holt was wrong. I wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've been doing the show, I've officially doubled my Twitter followers. So I, I thank right? you for for the platform. To, yeah. Uh, now I was in on Bob Holt, Davenport. I, I give it to the media guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I've laid off neighbors. You know, I know he got. He's all butt hurt, so I laid off John Neighbors. I don't want him, you know, filing any charges against me. But mm-hmm. just y'all, yeah, the Arkansas sports media just gets held to this standard that I, I, I think somebody's got to be there to knock him down a peg a little bit. You, yeah, you're, yourself included. You're that guy. Oh yeah, I've, I felt your wrath before. All right, Keith. It's all in good fun, man. Yeah, sure. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I appreciate you joining me. All right, go all Hogs. Right. Follow the baseball team, Trey. Yeah, sure. All right, all right later. later. All right, everybody, that's Keith Grayson, the disgraced former founder and president of the Arizona Razorback Club. Also has uh, Grayson Real Estate out in Arizona and uh, also does some high school football coaching as well. So kind of a jack of all trades. We always enjoy having Keith. He brings a unique perspective. Pretty generally funny all-around guy if you like feeling super awkward sometimes. Um, all right, I think we pretty much did it with Pete Roulier, Keith Grayson. I want to get into a couple of your questions now. Let's see if we got anything before we wrap the show up. Before we get into that, I also want to remind you, plenty of ways to watch and listen. Facebook Live, YouTube, be sure to throw us a thumbs up right now if you haven't done so already. Share the content with somebody else if you think they might like it. Hit the notifications bell and subscribe on YouTube. Follow the page on Facebook. Just take a second right now. I mean, you got to basically click a button. Maybe do a double tap on YouTube for subscribe and notify. Also available on Apple Podcasts. If you don't mind, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, throw us a second. Throw a second and and throw us a five star review. I mean, it's just a just a quick click of a button there too. So, uh, and if you like the show, also you know we'd love to have a comment from you. Um, to show other people what they can expect with Hog Sports Live. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you can think of to find Razorback content. Excuse me, anywhere you can think of to find podcasts. So hogsports.com is $1 right now for your first month or 30% off for your first year. So go sign up at hawgsports.com. It's hard talking 44 minutes straight. Clear my throat. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, let's see. Tailgating is good in Little Rock. That's the only good thing there. I mean, it can get exciting there. I mean, when a game is tight and the and the crowd is is full, it's just been a while. I mean, since it's been a great environment, just because of uh, you know there haven't been, haven't been a great team, but the tailgating is second to none in Little Rock. I agree. A lot of people just go for tailgating. They don't even have a ticket and never even plan to go to the game. Recruits need to see Fayetteville, says Pat Graham. Frick. I agree. Woo Pig Suey from Seaville, Virginia. Any news on lady sports, says Pat Graham. No news on lady sport. I mean, the basketball team's doing good. Lady sports general is doing well, but we don't we don't cover a lot just because people don't read it. I mean, if they did, then we would start covering it more, but we just can't get a lot of readership for the lady sports, so. All right, everybody, that pretty much does it. Not a lot of questions today. I think we kind of hit on pretty much everything. We just had a show on Friday, so this show, pretty quick turnaround on Monday. I want to thank Keith Grayson and Pete Roulier for joining us. I want to thank you for your questions and for your interaction. Not a lot of questions today. But uh, anyway, appreciate all you guys for joining. Appreciate you making the show popular. Throw us a review. Sign up right now. We're locking the show down. We're ending it right here. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Follow the page on Facebook. Throw us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Throw us a thumbs up at least. Share the video. Only if you like it. If you don't, don't worry about it. But we want to appreciate we appreciate you guys joining us. Um, and, yeah, that pretty much does it. Arkansas basketball on Wednesday. Baseball. When is the next baseball game? Baseball coming up to this weekend, Friday. So a little bit of a break. Oklahoma, Texas, Baylor. Should be a fun weekend. All right, everybody. 
Thanks for joining us. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.